Are you ready for another adventure on the high seas? As we learn about some new things about this wonderful book, the Bible, the treasure that is greater than gold. Come along now as we join those buccaneers and see what they're up to today. Ahoy there, mateys! Are ye ready for a joke? Aye, aye! Shiver me timbers! Why couldn't the pirate crew play cards? I don't know! Why? Because the captain was standing on the deck! <laughs> Get it? A deck? Deck of cards? <laughs> now, why does a pirate carry a sword? I don't know! Why? Because swords can't walk, of course! <laughs> this last joke be a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock! Who's there? A pirate who's only ever worn boots. Check it out. All right, let's get my shoes on so we can go. Um, just turn it over. No. All right. If you loop it, and then the bunny ears. No. Ah, let's try these shoes. With Velcro, that's easy. Maybe not. Ah, uh, woo, those are nice. I think I'll just stay home. What is the Bible? The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, and dreams, and together they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of His amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything that we see. God continued to speak through a family that He chose to show His love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected Him, they were taken into exile, and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending His Son Jesus to earth to fix our friendship with Him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God. Followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus it spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again, which is really a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much He loves you. Son, this good 
good news is for everyone. Good news, better than gold, better than anything you've been told. Yo ho, God gave His Son. This good news is for everyone. Yo ho, away we go. We'll tell everybody that we know. Yo ho, away we go. Away we go with a yo ho ho. Let's play this or that. Listen out for a question. If ye think the answer is on this side of the screen, wave your arms this way. And if ye think the answer is on that side of the screen, wave your arms that way. Ready? Here we go. Question one. What helped pirates see better at night? An eye patch or binoculars? An eye patch. Question two. Why did pirates wear earrings? to keep them from getting seasick, or to give them good luck playing checkers. To keep them from getting seasick. Question three. How many books are in the Bible? 107 or 66? There are 66 books in the Bible. Question four. Who is coming back to make the world right again? Pirates or Jesus? Jesus is coming back. Question five. What is the Bible? Is it God's story or God's rule book? The Bible is God's story. From the beginning of time, God has been writing a story about His love for us. And in every book and chapter of the Bible, we can see how powerful God and His words really are. All of God's words have the power to show us who He is, who we are to Him, and how much He loves us. They have the power to change us and save us from the sin that started way back with Adam and Eve and still hurts our friendship with God today. When we read the Bible, we'll see that since Adam and Eve first sinned, God has been trying to show us how much He loves us. He did that through His family story about the Israelites and all the kings who reigned over them. He sent everyone messages about His love for them through people called prophets. But God's biggest message was His Son, Jesus, who came to earth to help us know how to live. Then He died on the cross to take the punishment for everyone's sin. He even defeated sin and death when God raised Him back to life. God wanted everyone to be a part of his family. So he started the church and sent people who believed in Jesus out to tell more people the good news about him. But that wasn't the end of God's story. You see, the Bible actually ends with the promise of a new beginning. In the last book of the Bible called Revelation, we see how Jesus sent an angel with a message from God to one of his closest friends named John, who was imprisoned on the island of Patmos. John heard a loud voice tell him to write down what he was about to see because God wanted everyone who believed in him to know what would happen soon. John saw how Jesus really does rule over everyone on the earth and that glory and power belong to him forever. And speaking of forever, John saw a new heaven and a new earth that will never end. It will be a perfect place for God to live with people just like he did at the very beginning of his story. Here, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness or crying or pain. John heard God promise, I am making everything new. Write this down, you can trust these words. They are true. Jesus agreed and said, yes, I am coming soon. Because at just the right time, God will send Jesus back to make everything right. Then evil will be gone. This may sound like a happy ending, but really, it's the happy beginning of forever. All of God's words have the power to give us hope that if we believe in Jesus, we will get to experience all of the treasures He has for us in heaven. Oh. God's word has power. God's word has power. Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. God's word has power! <laughs> Everyone!
fun. Get on your feet and sing along. Let's learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody. Hebrews and James. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. Jude and Revelation. Oh, yeah, we did it. That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. Follow the treasure. Now where's the treasure? Are you serious? There's some pretty amazing things in the Bible. See if you can figure out which of these actually happened. A. There will be no nighttime in heaven. B. A pig was turned into a human. Or C. A woman lifted 1,332 pounds. It was A. In a book of the Bible called Revelation, it says there will be no nighttime in heaven. We won't need the sun there either. God will give us all the light we need. Seriously, that's really true. You can read it for yourself in Revelation chapter 22. Pretty amazing, right? Ahoy! Let's learn a verse from God's Word. Psalm 119, 140 tells us why the Bible is such a good gift from God to His people. Let's see if you can learn it by filling in the blanks. Shout out the word you think is missing. Your to me. Your word. You got it. <laughs> Let's do another one. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure <laughs> gold. That's it. Just one more. I what you <laughs> I treasure what you say. <laughs> We'll shiver me timbers! You got it! Let's say it all together now! Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold! I treasure what you say! <laughs> you can find that treasure in Psalm 119, 140! Nice work, mateys! Nice work! All right, me crew! Get up and dance like a pirate!
read your Bible, there are three questions you can ask. The first question is what? What did we read in God's Word today? Did we read about A, a pirate who caught a fish, B, a donkey that talked to a man, or C, God's promise of heaven? The answer is C. We read about how God showed John what heaven is like. It's a perfect place where all of the people who believe in Jesus will live with God forever. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is, so what? Or in other words, why does this matter for me? Well, it matters to you because God loves you and he wants you and me and everyone everywhere to believe in Jesus so that our friendship with him can be fixed and we can live in heaven with him one day. And the last question to ask is, now what? Now, what do we do with what we've learned? Well, there are lots of things we can do. We can admit that we've done wrong things and need Jesus to fix our friendship with God. We can believe that Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, and died to take the punishment for the wrong things we do. And we can commit to following Jesus the best we possibly can every single day. Finally, you can look forward to heaven the perfect and awesome place where Jesus' followers will live with God forever one day. And whenever you read the Bible, remember to ask yourself, what, so what, now what? All right, mateys, before you go, let's get real quiet and pray together. Father God, thank you for loving us and making a way for us to live forever with you in heaven. And thank you for giving us the Bible to read each day. Your word really is better than gold. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's word has power. Yeah!